Hello, welcome to part 7 of my series on servicing an Olympus BHTU microscope. If you've been following along, uh, part 1 I worked on the focus block, part 2 I worked on the uh, coaxial focus mechanism, part 3 was the nose piece, part 4 was substage illumination, part 5 was the actual substage assembly here, part 6 was the stage specimen clip, and today in part seven I'm going to do a little bit of work on the binocular head. This thing um, is a little bit a little bit stiff on the action here and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just tear it down, clean all the grease, and re-grease it and it should be good to go. Okay, so let's start by removing the binocular head from the stand. And this is a BHTU scope. Let me raise the camera just a little bit. There we go. Since this is a BHTU scope, this uh, thumb screw works a little different than it would if it were a BHT or a BHS. On the BHTU, you basically just loosen this guy up. Just keep loosening it until the head comes out. So it's pretty simple. If you had a BHT or a BHS, what you would do is you would loosen it until it wouldn't loosen anymore. Then you would actually pull this thumb screw out. It's spring loaded and you would pull it out and remove the head. But other than that, it's the same. So uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to set this stand aside for safekeeping and we'll uh, get started on the head. Okay, before I do just about anything else to this head, I've got a little plastic dust cap that I want to put over this bottom mount. There's a there's a lens right there, uh, I should say an optic, there's a cylindrical prism as they call it, right here. I want to cover that up just so that I don't damage it or get it dirty. If you don't have that, you could tape something over there, or if you don't do that, just be really careful and make sure you don't cause any damage to that. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a uh, a little bit of isopropyl alcohol, a couple cleaning pads, and I'm just going to take it and clean the exterior here and see if I can see if I can get this in the cleaner. These things uh, are usually pretty grody by the time you get them. This one is really not too bad, but there is some stuff coming off on it. Okay, yeah, I got a little bit off there. That was worth doing. Okay, so let's uh, start taking this thing apart. Okay, the first thing I do to take one of these things apart is I uh, remove this uh, knurled ring on the leftmost eyepiece tube. That's the ring that has the diopter scales on there for focusing the eyepiece. And to remove it, I use a uh, 1.3 millimeter 0 .050 hex tool. There's uh, three equally spaced set screws in the in these in, in the knurled ring. I'll go in a little closer so you can hopefully see that. And what I'm going to do is I'm basically going to loosen these up. I'm not going to take them all the way out, but I am going to loosen them up. It's a little awkward trying to do this so the camera can actually see it, so I hope you understand that this is not ordinarily how it wouldn't ordinarily be this awkward. Okay, so these three are loosened up. Next thing to do is to just remove this. And these things sometimes are a little stubborn. There. So let's set this aside. So the next thing I want to do is I want to remove these two plastic, these two plastic grip plates here. These have little serrations in here so your fingers can grip it and you can adjust the, inter the, the interocular distance. So in order to take those out, 
There's a couple small, let's go in just a little closer. There's a couple small JIS screws, one on each, one in the front of each of these plates. I'm using a Hosan JIS screwdriver for this. And let's just take those out. Okay, those two are out. Now the next thing to do is to uh, spread these tubes apart very wide such that in the back here these two screws here and these two screws here are accessible. If you don't have it spread, as you can see, there's no access to those. So let's spread that out. And once again, using a uh, JIS screwdriver, let's go in and stick these screws out. It's important to use the one that actually fits it. Okay. And now that those two screws are out, this uh, grip plate is free and comes off, as you can see. Now let's uh, turn it over, do the same thing with these. Okay, and this grip plate is off. So now that the plastic grip plates have been removed, you can see that there's that we have access to all the all the stuff underneath them. Um, which includes a couple of screws here, uh, a couple of screws here, and uh, this little center trim plate. Let's start out by just taking off this trim plate. There are just a couple small JIS screws in the top. And uh, in the bottom here. So let's get those taken out. Start by taking the two in the top. Once those are out, flip it over, take out the two on the bottom. And once that's done, then this whole center plate, as long as these are spread wide enough apart, should just come right out. And as you can see, that exposes more of the mechanism. Okay, the thing I want to do next is to actually take this whole black frame, this whole piece here, out of the housing. And the way you do that is uh, you set this to just the right width so that you have access to these four screws here, two here, two on this side. As you can see, if you're not set to the right width, you don't have proper access to the screws. So go ahead and center those up. Take your uh, JIS screwdriver that fits it. And loosen and remove these four screws. Okay, there's two. Let's 
continue on the other side. There's three. And number four. So now that those screws are set aside, um, what we want to do is just carefully pull this straight out from the housing. And I will set the housing, as, as you can see there's some optics inside there. There's your magic Kevinon piece. If you look up my PDF and read the, re the reference where I show how to disassemble and repair this thing, it'll talk about that piece. I won't waste any time on it here. But anyway, I'll set this aside. And we'll get started on this piece. Okay, just as a quick aside, this uh, assembly here is to say, you know, whether you have a binocular head, in this case it's the BH2 BI30 binocular head, it's called the 30 because it has a 30 degree inclination angle. Whether you have that or you have the BH2 TR30 trinocular head, which has the same 30 degree inclination. This assembly is the same, this piece here. So even if you have a trinocular head, uh, as a result of watching this video, you'll at least know how to address this portion of your head. So the best way to attack this is to turn it around and set it on your bench such that that uh, these two screws here and these springs are on top and what you do to start out with um, these springs are preloaded so what you want to do is you need to unpreload these springs you need to they're when they go in they get flipped around and preloaded and such that, that there's always tension on these nylon key followers here so uh, to start out with it's a little hard to see on camera, but to start out with, I'm just going to reach in here and uh, and unspring that. So I'm going to push it back, lift it up over the top of that screw, and let it come back. And at that point, there's no tension on this spring. Now this spring here is a little different. It goes the other way. It has to. I move it this way, and then I have to get it on the other side of this spring, lift it up over the screw on this side, and now there's no tension on either one of these. So at this point, what I want to do is take a flat bladed screwdriver in these slotted screws and carefully loosen and remove those. And in so doing, the screws will come out and then I can take the springs out as well. Okay, now the springs, they just have a hook and they hook over these white nylon follower keys so to take it out, you just reach in and unhook it. Same thing for the other side. Reach in, unhook it, take it out. You'll see that one of them has a kind of an L shape to it, and the other is straight. The L shape typically is on the right-hand side. I'm not 100% sure that it matters, but try to get them together right when you do. Okay, so next, what we want to do is we want to take out these two nylon follower screws. Using a uh, flat bladed screwdriver that fits these slots pretty well. You got to be really careful on these because these can be stubborn and you don't want to bung up the heads, otherwise, you may never get them out. Okay, that one is loose. So the uh, danger for that one is passed. Let's see if I can get the other one to come out. Okay, yeah, so these are going to come out, no problem, no thread bugging, no uh, head bugging, none of that. So what I want to do, I just want to grip these things, pull them out. Okay, so we'll set these aside.
Now that the two screws and the springs and the followers have all been taken out, I can come around here and uh, this leftmost eyepiece tube should just pull right out. And I'll set this aside. The right mountmost tube will also come out, but before it will come out, we have to get this little trim ring that goes around the thing. That has to be taken off first, otherwise it won't come out. The way I do that is I just use a very fine flat-bladed screwdriver. Okay, so I'm going to put this screwdriver carefully in this little notch. Well, and uh, once it starts to lift up, then I want to go around with it and break that glue bond that's holding this thing down. And let's go both directions. Until it comes free and apparently falls on the floor. Okay, here it is. It's a, here it is. It's a little bit misshapen, so I need to reshape that so that when it goes back in, it fits properly. I also need to trim off the uh, trim off the glue that's on here, so I'll do that off camera. But basically, once that thing has been removed, this one comes out. Okay, um, now that these are out, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take out these two blocks. There's two screws here holding this block in, two screws here holding this in. And these are blocks that are part of the dovetail slides for the, inter for the interocular distance adjustment. Before I do that though, I want to talk a little bit more about these springs that I took out because I may have been a little misleading at first. I took, I took out the two, screw the two springs, I said one of them is L-shaped, that's on the right hand side. That is to say that goes on the right hand side when you view this assembly from the back. So technically it's on the other side when you put it back together. But what I usually do is I just lay this on the bench like this. This one is on viewed from the back is on the left hand side so I'll just lay it right there like that. So when it comes time to put these back together I know when I'm looking at it from this viewpoint this is how they go in. So now having said that, I'm going to take out these four screws uh, using a JIS screwdriver. And I always grab the wrong one. Okay. So now the two screws holding the right one in are out. Do the same thing for the left block. Okay. So now the screws are out, so in theory these blocks will come off. If, if you look carefully, if I zoom in, and you look carefully at this, if I have the light just right, you'll see that there's a there's a pin here that you can see the end of it here. So there's two pins in this block. There's also two pins in this block. And those hold it down with perfect registration. But that also means that for these things to come off, for these blocks to come off, they basically have to come straight off. You can't just knock them loose or whatever. So that can be a little frustrating. Sometimes the grease gets so stiff in there that it can be difficult to take these out. What I usually do is just start out with a screwdriver and just kind of start working it. And in this case, I don't know if you can see that, but in this case, it uh, it's starting to separate there. I think you can see it now. So pull that off the pins. Now on this one, when viewing this from the front, this is on the left. So I'm going to set this down here on my bench. I got the two springs here and I'm going to set the two blocks here. It's going to be a little misleading because this block actually goes with that spring, this block goes with that spring, but these are viewed from the front and these are viewed from the back. Uh, it's a convoluted thing and works for me so you know, do whatever you have to do to get them in right. If you don't get them in right it's possible that this slide won't work quite right because these kind of these kind of wear in and, and they are kind of a custom fitted thing. 
So let's see if I can get the second one to come loose. Yes. So this isn't too bad. Uh, I've seen them where I have to put penetrating oil in and use heat and force and all kinds of things before they'll come loose. But this one came off also. Set it back there. And now there's really nothing holding these guys in, these two slides. I'm just going to grab the, the rightmost slide and if I pull it forward just a little bit at the top like that it'll be engaged in the bottom in a dovetail slide so what I want to do is just pull it forward a little bit so I can clear these pins so this piece clears these pins and then lift it up and carefully pull this straight out you want to be careful there's there's optics there's prisms in here those are going to be, that's going to need to be cleaned but there's a prism surface here and there's also a prism surface inside of there that you don't want to get dirty but I'm just going to set this aside now and uh, do the same thing for this one. Pull it out to clear these two pins. Lift it up to disengage it on the bottom. Pull it straight out. And there's a little dust on these prisms, so yeah, they'll definitely benefit from the cleaning. Which I'll do off camera, of course. Okay, now as far as disassembly on this, we don't take this whole uh, swan cube splitter assembly, we don't take that off, we just leave that in place. If necessary, we clean the, this surface, and this surface, and this third surface here, clean the dust and whatever off those, but I'll just leave that in place, there's no reason to take that off. In fact, if you do take it off, then you can get the alignment incorrect when you put it back together so it's best just to leave that in place now I want to take a uh, slotted screw slotted screwdriver put the tip in this slotted screw here hold this guy so it doesn't uh, spin on me and then loosen and remove this brass screw here and these two pieces come off at that point and this is this is the uh, I guess it, I'd call this an equalizing lever. It sits here and spins and as one of the tubes slides one direction, it forces the other tube to slide an equal amount in the opposite direction so that as they move they're always they're all, one in relation to the other is always centered over the reference to this screw so that they both move out and they both move in and you don't end up with one moving out and the other moving in and things like that. So we'll set this aside. Okay, now that is the disassembly. What I want to do is I want to go back, off camera I'll do this, but I want to clean all the grease off of this surface here, this surface here, down into this uh, dovetail slide surface on the bottom, get all that cleaned up. I'll also uh, clean up both of these blocks. And while I'm at it, I'm going to clean grease off of this surface, this surface, and these back machine bearing surfaces here. Do that. Same exercise on the other tube assembly. And then I'm going to take uh, Q-tips. I'm going to go in and clean out this inner bore here. Thoroughly clean that, being careful not to get that on the, on the uh, prism inside there. I'll do the same thing to this bore and I'll clean these outer surfaces here like I say I'll be using probably acetone on all of these these are all metal parts so acetone is safe for them so give me just a little time uh, it'll be instantaneous to you but I'll be back okay off camera I've cleaned all these pieces like I said I would, so uh, that saved a lot of time for you guys. I do want to mention one thing. Um, these two tubes, this is a stationary one, this is on the right hand side, right hand tube. The left hand tube is the one that's got this helical focus mechanism. And uh, in this case the, uh, the grease in this helical focus is, is fine, there's no, no reason to clean it. It feels, it feels great in fact. If I did have to clean it, what I would do is I would unscrew this, 
I would thoroughly clean these threads inside and out, lightly coat it with a uh, suitable helical grease. I've been using Helimax, Helimax XP grease. Uh, it's available through Amazon and eBay. And once you lightly coat that, then you would basically go back in here and re-engage this. And these are these these helical mechanisms. They can it can be really hard to get them to drop back into mesh, back to get the threads engaged because of the way the helical threads work. You have to be really careful. You don't want to force them at all, or you can bung it up, and then you'll never get them back together. Just keep trying, keep aligning, and eventually it should fall into place and it can take quite a while but anyway so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna bother to clean and re-grease that since it's fine but I did, I did clean this outer barrel and uh, like I said I cleaned everything that I, like I said I would so it's time now to put it all back together so let me set these pieces aside this has been reshaped and cleaned Okay, we start with the front. We start with this main frame. We um, set it up so that on the bench the pins are on top, and this uh, dovetail slot here is on the bottom. Now, what I want to do is I want to squirt some uh, grease. In this case, I'm using Plastilube brick grease. just want to squirt some of that here so that I can work from that. Then taking a toothpick, I just want to pick up some of this grease. And let me go in a little closer for you. I want to put this grease into this bottom slot, distribute it throughout the whole length of it, and clean out any excess. So that's what I'm doing here. Okay, so the right side is greased. Go back and do the same thing for the left side. Okay, so that's uh, been preliminarily greased, but I want to now clean up some of that excess. There's no reason to have excess grease in there. If, if you do, it'll just, just end up everywhere. It'll be a mess for you. Okay, so I've got some of the excess grease out of there. So I think that piece is good. I need to put this screw here and this equalizing lever. I need to put both of those in. So I'm going to start by just putting just a little bit of grease on this surface, being very careful not to get it on the prism. And once I've got that on there, I can lay this, stick it to the grease and it should stay more or less in place. Well, once I do that, then I want to grease this bottom surface here. Just lightly grease that, you don't need a lot on there, but you do want a little. Okay, so now I line this up, tighten it up so that the threads are engaged a little bit. Take a uh, flat bladed screwdriver, go ahead and snug this down. And when the screw is snug down, this piece should move freely, and it is, so I think that's in good shape there. So now what we want to do, pick up one of these guys and figure out which it is, whether it's left or right. And the way to know that is to look in the tube. If you look into the tube, there's a slot on the top. And that little slot is for this tab to stick into. So if you orient it so that the slots are on the top, then uh, that makes this the right tube because this piece has to extend over to catch this equalizing lever. Similarly, if you orient this one so that the slot's on the top, then the bottom piece here extends and grabs it into the bottom of that tab. 
So that makes this the left one and this the right one. Let's get a little more grease. Okay, now what I want to do, I'll start with the left one here. I want to take a little bit of grease and lightly, uh, lightly coat this dovetail surface here. This will be on the top when it goes together. The bottom, I'm not going to really grease it too much. I'll hit just a little bit on there, but the bottom, I've already greased that bottom channel, so I really, in theory, shouldn't really need any grease here. Okay, then I'll come around onto the back. There's a flat bearing surface here and one on the top. I want to lightly grease those as well. Because those slide onto flat surfaces on the frame. Okay, now once that's all done, I want to turn this back around, orient it so that that little hole, that little slot inside of here is on the top, and it is. So I want to put this, let me zoom out if I can, yeah. I want to slide this straight into here, engage the bottom piece into that, into that dovetail slide, and at the same time there's a pin on this bottom piece that needs to engage in this equalizing lever. If I get that in there just right now, if I slide this, you can see that equalizing lever is moving along with it. So if I slide one tube, that would cause the other tube to slide the opposite direction, equal distance. Okay, so that piece is more or less in place. Now we grab the block that was originally on the left hand side. Uh, there's already grease here on this surface, but I'm going to go ahead and just lightly, very lightly grease this surface of the block, this angled surface of the block. And I want to put the block in, engage it over those two alignment pins, press it home. And when it's like that, now this thing should move freely. It does. So now I grab uh, the four screws that came out of there. Get the proper JIS screwdriver. Put two screws in to hold this left block in place. I'm going to go ahead and snug those down a little bit. They don't have to be really tight, but they do need to be snug. Okay, and at that point, let's double check, make sure this still slides, and it does. As you can see, there's grease squeeze out that will all have to be cleaned off, but for now, everything is looking good. So now we repeat the whole procedure using uh, the right block we grease this surface this surface these two back surfaces and then we reinstall it so let's get that done Okay, now for the back surfaces. Okay. Let's get this grease out of the way before the unthinkable happens. Now, once again, I slide that in, engage this bottom into this bottom groove. Make sure this pin goes into this hole in the top of the equalizing lever. Like that. And if I did it right, I should be able to slide. And as you can see now, they both move together in equal and opposite directions. That's how they should work. So I take the right block, lightly grease the beveled surface. slide it over the pins and put the two JIS screws in to hold it in place. S 
snug them down. And make sure that it moves as it should. If you get to this point and you, you snug these down and everything is tight, uh, that means there's a good chance that you possibly swap the left and right blocks have been swapped, in which case you can take them off or place them and that should free you up. So this is working good. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to go off camera. I'm going to clean off all this grease squeeze out. There's grease all along here and all along the bottom it's squeezed out. So let me go clean that up. What I'm going to do is I'm going to install this and this tube back into these eyepiece tubes, lightly greasing them first. Once we get those put in, then we can turn around and we can put in the nylon followers, the springs and screws, and at that point this assembly will be done, pretty much. Okay, so let's start out by applying a little bit of grease inside these. So here I have a little bit of a Helimax XP helical grease, helicoid grease. This is lithium and Teflon based, and it's, uh, it's an NLG1, NLGI1 grease that makes it a very light grease. And that's, uh, that's nice to have on these slides because you don't want to add a lot of friction here. You basically just want enough grease in there that they don't ever gall up because it is uh, metal on metal otherwise. Now I just take a very little bit on my finger. I don't bother, I don't use a uh, swab or anything to put this in because otherwise it'll just leave fibers behind and that's not good. So I just very lightly grease this entire surface in here. And I do the same thing in the other tube. Okay. Now, take these two tubes here. The one that's uh, got a fixed position, has no, no helical adjustment on it. Orient it so that this tab is on the top slide it in there and if I get it right it'll drop into that uh, slot inside there. That is, if I had this oriented right it would. So the slots are on top. If I look down in there and make sure it all lines up. There we go. So now that, uh, once that's engaged, that moves in and out smoothly. Very little resistance, so we're good there. And we do the same thing to this other side. This one is the left tube, and it's the one that's got the helical focus mechanism on it. Tab up, sight down there to get it aligned up, and that one dropped in even easier. So, um, that one works. Helical adjustment works. That one slides. So let's turn this around. And uh, we're going to work on the springs and the followers here. Now, if you look down this slot and you move this uh, tube in and out, you'll see that there's a hole in there on that tab that's sticking in there. And you want to set it up so that hole is visible in that slot. Once you get that done, then we drop one of these nylon followers in there and the threads on here go, go into that tapped hole there and we snug it down with a screwdriver and then we do the same thing on the other side here line it up roughly like that drop the other follower in there and so let's do that this is going to be hard for you to see but uh, that's basically what I'm doing this can be a little frustrating because everything has to line up just right and you don't want to force it, you don't want to damage the threads or anything, but when you get everything lined up just right, snug it down. And at that point, as you uh, rotate this guy, you'll see that nylon follower rides in this slot. So as you move the tube left to right, as you slide this left to right, you'll see this tube, as a result of this action of this slot, this tube will move in and out along with it and that's called an automatic comp an automatically compensated design and what it does as you slide this further apart it pulls the tube in so that it keeps the optical path the same distance so that you don't have variations in your tube length as you uh, spread this thing to adjust for your eyes 
And uh, so now let's go ahead and put the second one in. Make sure that's all lined up. It goes in exactly the same way. You just drop it in there. Don't force it. Just try to get the screws, try to get the threads to engage. And sometimes you have to play around a little bit with it before it will. And there it goes. So now, as I operate this, you'll see that both tubes move together on unison. So that is the, uh, that's the uh, automatically compensated design. The earlier heads or the cheaper heads like on the CH and CH2s and whatever, they just kind of ignore this whole thing. They just let the tube length vary as you spread that. It keeps all this excess parts out. It keeps the design cheap and for an educational scope using the uh, low grade objectives they use it's probably not a big deal. But uh, this is a pretty nice design here. Okay, so these are in. Let's put the screws in, or the uh, springs in. We'll need these two screws. We'll need the spring that goes on the right side, as viewed from the back. That would be this one. The left side, as viewed from the back, is this one. So let's start out and just put the left one in. This little hook here that goes in, wraps around that nylon follower, like this. Let me see if I can get you just a little closer. So what I do is I put it in like that and wrap it around that thing. You view it from the other from this angle. It just goes in. Sorry, it goes in this way. Wraps around, and once it's over that, then you align this coil in the spring with this tapped hole here. Take one of these two uh, brass screws and put those in. Put it in. And what that will do is that'll give you a pivot point for your spring, and it also gives you a attachment points that you can use to preload the springs. So snug that down. Okay, so the left spring is installed. Same thing for the right. This hook just goes in under here, hooks over that follower key, and then we Line the coil with the tapped hole, drop the screw in there, and get the threads to engage. Easier said than done when there's a camera right in the way. Okay, threads are engaged now. Snug it down. Okay, now all we gotta do is preload these springs. I'm gonna start with this one, which is the right, viewed from the back, the rightmost spring. What I do is I lift it up over this. So I lift it up over the head of the left screw, like that. Pull this spring out of the way, drop it down, and let it go. So at this point now, this rightmost spring is preloaded. Now the left one goes a little differently. I just lift it up over the screw head on the right side, put it on the back and let it go. And at that point now they're both under tension. And if I move this, everything should go nice and smooth. If necessary you can put a little bit of light silicone grease in these slots. In this case this feels really good. I don't really want to put the grease in there because it just makes a mess. And it's really not necessary in this case. Sometimes if they're a little tighter, it might be necessary. So this guy is working well now. I'm going to go off camera. I'm going to take some 409 Windex or something like that and just clean all the oily fingerprints and everything off of this. And uh, we're on the downhill side of putting this thing back together. Okay, what I want to put on next is this little center trim piece. It's got the uh, scale for the interocular distance on there. And uh, that guy is held in place with these four little screws here. 
Okay, now what you do is you spread this guy open to uh, make room for this piece. Scales go on top. By top, I mean the same side where the springs are, back here. Like that. And uh, basically, uh, put two little screws uh, in here on top, two on the bottom. Okay, I'm going to snug these two. Flip it over and do the same thing on the bottom. Get that one started. Snug those down. Snug goes down, snug goes up, either one works. Okay. So at this point, I think we're ready to put it back in the housing shell. Off camera, I cleaned that prism surface in there, and uh, this is ready to go back in. So with the uh, mounting disc, the mounting circular dovetail down, put it together so that the springs are up. The uh, leftmost eyepiece is where the uh, helical focus is. I want to just carefully slide that in there, making sure I don't damage anything in the process. Slide that in there and next there's four screws that go in here before we can actually get to the screws however we have to set it up to the right distance and then at that point we align everything until the screws are all perfectly aligned screw holes are perfectly aligned loosely put the screws in and then we'll do a final alignment and snug them down okay and I actually picked up the right screwdriver this time So, maybe you can see this, then again, maybe not, but, okay, so I want to loosen that up just a little bit, proceed with the second one, once it snugs, Loosen it up just a little bit. I'm going to go over here and put the two in on this side. Loosen it up just a bit. And the last one goes in. Let's it up just a little bit. Now, these are in. This is bolted in place, but as you can see, it still has a lot of movement, a lot of, a lot of slack. And that's intentional because what I want to do is I want to I want to align this so that this thing is even with the top and even with the bottom. I don't want either, either piece sticking up. I want it, basically I want to split the difference in the slack once I have that. Then I lightly snug these down. Come over here and do the same thing on this side. Adjust the camera just a little bit. Okay. So I do the same thing on this side so that it's. So I split the difference. Go in there and lightly snug these down. Then I go back. Check both sides and make sure it feels good. Reviewed from the end, you know, everything's lined up well. And once they are, then I go back and do a final tightening on these four screws. Okay, 
So that gets that reinstalled into the housing. This thing feels really nice, works really well. Uh, all that remains to do is to put on the two plastic grip plates here. Put those in. There's a couple screws that go in from the front, two each on the back. Once those go on, put the knurled uh, ring on the left side, put the trim ring on the right side, and give it a final wipe down to get rid of any fingerprints, and it'll be ready to go back on the scope. So let's start with uh, on the two grip plates. Let's find the one with the white dot. And that's the one that goes on the left side because this white dot is the uh, index mark for the helical position, helical focus. So uh, just slip it over like that. We got like six screws here. Find the two long, small screws. Take a small JIS screwdriver. And uh, let's install this but not do a final tightening on it. So that's kind of holding it in place. Take the other side without the white dot. That goes on the right side. Same size screw goes in the front over here. And I want to tighten until it's just snug. Back it off a little bit. So now there's a little bit of movement on both of these, as you can see. Okay, now, we take the interocular distance, slide it to the max position, lay this thing up like that, and hopefully now you can see there's going to be two screws go into there. Using the JIS screwdriver once again, I put one in, leave it a little bit loose, take the second one, put it in, leave it a little bit loose. Now I line this up just so I have a good, uh, good alignment with the edge on this, and once I have that, I go back and snug these two screws down. And then uh, come back here on the front with a little with a smaller screwdriver, snug down that little screw. And I set it up other side so that I have access to these two screws. And I do the same thing. First, I install them both loosely. Like so. Then I make sure it feels aligned, snug these down. And I take the final uh, screw here and snug it down. Okay, now these plastic grip plates are reinstalled. Everything's working. Uh, I, I'll come back when it's all done and once again wipe it down for fingerprints. Because there are a few on there now. But that's in place. So now I think we proceed with the uh, knurled ring and the trim ring. Let's start with the knurled ring. Now the way, uh, the way I usually do this is I want to put this thing on and when I put it on before I tighten it down I want to make sure that the zero here is aligned with the dot on the grip plate while this is at the proper position. I'm not sure if that makes sense but basically you rotate this around until the focus on this eyepiece matches this eyepiece and at that point the zero should align with the dot. And so the way I do that, there's a couple ways you can do that. You can do it visually using a whole procedure but to me, the easiest way to do it is to just, if you set it up so that you can sight down the side like that, take some kind of a straight edge. In this case, I've got a little triangular shaped ruler. 
and lay it right across this eyepiece tube here, you'll see down there there's a gap. So that gap is the difference between the length of this tube and that tube. So now if I uh, unscrew this helical until it just hits the ruler, so now the ruler is contacting this surface and this surface at the same time, that's the zero diopter position of this thing. So now if I'm careful and I don't rotate this, then all I got to do is put this ring in there, align the zero with the dot, and tighten it down. And as you can see, uh, as you could not see, now as you can see the zero aligns with the dot. It's pressed in place. All I've got to do is take my magic uh, 1.3 millimeter 050 tool, hex tool because these are Allen set screws, and working uh, left handed and therefore awkward, go through here and snug all three of these set screws down. Okay, this guy is on. So that now, when we're set up for zero here, we've got equal distance, equal length, equal tube length on both sides. We can go like that. Everything seems to work. So the last thing to do is put this trim ring on and then do a final wipe down and it'll be ready to go back on the scope. So I have here some black E6000 adhesive and I like to use black adhesive on here because inevitably there's going to be squeeze out and uh, the black squeeze out you know you clean off the squeeze out to whatever extent you can but the black really uh, is unobtrusive because inevitably there's going to be some glue that's visible. So I just take a little bit of this and I apply it just right on this edge surface here and it strings everywhere so you really have to be careful with that make sure that doesn't get everywhere. And I basically apply like three dots you know equally spaced around the circle so roughly every 120 degrees One more. Looks like it ought to go kind of there. And once again, try to do some stringing control. Okay, now take this little trim ring. There's a little bit of a little bit of a notch that goes down at the six o'clock position place this over that notch at six o'clock position press it in there and press it home and of course just let the glue squeeze out as it does and once you get that done come back wipe off the squeeze out uh, using alcohol or whatever if, if necessary to get the last visible traces of glue off of this I think I'll do that. A little bit of isopropyl alcohol here. Wipe the inner and outer tube. Okay. Now, a little bit of time for that glue to set up. And it'll be ready. Uh, and like I say, I'll wipe down all the fingerprints off of that centerpiece and whatever. But I think uh, I think this head is done. Okay, uh, with this uh, final head head finalized and done a wipe down with 409 cleaner, let's bring back the stand. Just the camera so you can get a good shot. Alright, to put the head on, all I do is make sure this thumb screw is loosened. If it were a BHT or a BHS, I would loosen it and pull it back to, against the spring tension. But since this is a BHTU, all I have to do is loosen it. Now, 
take this, uh, take, take this protective cap off. This circular dovetail drops down into the recess here, and once it's in, I just snug down the thumb screw. And at that point, the head is reinstalled on the stand. And I think at this point now, I can say that this stand has been turned into a Holt uh, tired, very tired scope from eBay has been turned into a usable scope now. It'll, I'll do a little bit of uh, alignment on it, put optics on it, and check it out. But so I think I'm going to say this is the end of part seven. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, see you in part eight.